So in this video we're going to talk to two survivors of a caravan sway crash who are lucky not to be killed. We're very grateful that they're brave enough to stand up and talk to everybody about exactly what happened there because the idea is that you'll watch this and then you'll learn from those mistakes and not make them and so you too won't end up inverted on some highway somewhere waiting to be cut out of your crashed vehicle. Now the combination you'll see in the video is a 2008 Pajero and an MDC off-road hybrid caravan. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with either the Pajero or the MDC because there are many, many people towing with both of those and probably many people towing Pajeros with that particular model. But there is something specifically wrong with that particular rig at that particular time which caused it to sway and then there is an issue with the driver actions which we'll get to as well. So I don't have any concerns about the Pajero and I certainly don't have any concerns about the MDC because as it happens I went and bought myself exactly the same model and I've now towed this for quite a bit uphill downhill up to 100 um, over 100 k's an hour and I don't have any concerns with its towability given the size and weight and what it is. Now there's one type of comet which tends to come out in any form of crash or problem scenario and that is the stupidity comment. How do people not notice? Well, it's pretty simple. Towing is not straightforward. It takes a lot of skill and time to master and not knowing it does not mean to say you're stupid. It means that you just haven't mastered what is a complex skill which is absolutely essential if you're going to tow safely. No one is born knowing how to hook up a trailer with all the cables and wires and everything else. No one is born knowing how to understand trailer sway, how trailer brakes work and the effect of trailer brakes on sway and car brakes on sway. It's all all got to be learned and that's why I'm making these videos and not knowing that doesn't make you stupid it just means that you've got something to learn and I really want to say thank you on behalf of the trailer and caravan community to Amanda and Trevor for allowing me to tell their story it took a lot of guts a lot of bravery and I hope you'll respect that in the comments and Andrea so thanks very much for uh, talking to us about this because it's going to be a really really valuable experience can you just take us back to your skills and experience towing before you even got behind the wheel of the vehicle on that fateful day? Okay, um, my experience in driving is I'm a 61 year old woman and I've had my car license since I was 17 years old um, and um, driven um, various vehicles because we've got five children including four wheel drive um, people movers and um, four uh, Land Cruiser Pajero four wheel drive, but only on road. Um, and when I'm off road, I haven't actually done severe um, four wheel driving with it, just just some sandy sort of areas. Okay. Um, and with towing, I didn't have any experience with towing. I don't think I probably may have towed um, a light trailer one on one or two occasions. That's about it. Okay, so mm -hmm. you had no training in towing or knowledge of trailers or anything else like that, really? No, no. My husband does predominantly the towing in our family. Um, he has towed boat trailers. Um, we had box pre trailers. Uh, box trailers and we, had, yeah. we have a camper trailer that we had upgraded and it was a 25-year-old camper trailer. It was very solid and heavy off-road. Um, off but um, I probably had towed it on a road um, maybe once or twice only. Um, so my husband, uh, for short distances, so my husband had done predominantly all the towing in our family. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the setup you had um, which, which crashed was a Pajero with a um, off-road hybrid camper trailer weighs about, I'd imagine, what, 2.3 tonnes um, mm -hmm. as you had 2 it? 2.2. 2.2 tear um, oh. on the... On the um, no, the plate, compliance plate. On the compliance plate for the van, okay. and the hybrid van. And um, the Pajero was a 2008 model. Yep. Um, so one more... 2.5 uh, uh, capacity towing. Capacity 2.5 towing. Right. Um, the van itself, if it was 2.2 tear, probably would have been a little bit over that 
um, because you probably had water tanks and everything else filled. So maybe two. We actually, four. we oh. kept it fairly light. Okay. Um, we had the actual, we didn't have a fridge in it. The fridge was in okay. the car and we had um, the water tanks weren't completely full either. I no, don't think. One tank at half full with about a hundred litres. So it really only would have gone to be a new, your stuff and the, would only be another two, maximum 200 kilos. In it, okay. yeah. All right, so probably looking at that 2.4 then, so still um, not, mm. not a super heavy trailer. So on the day then, um, did you just between the two of you just decide that you just have a go at towing? Um, basically, we um, were in a town so uh, and we had to then go through a country road to get back to our, our city. Um, so it wasn't off road, it was on tarmac. Um, I, my husband said, I think you should have a go at trying this. Um, he ran me through, um, like we were only driving at 60K and he ran me through the brake, um, mm -hmm. said to test the um, arc brake and um, then red arc, yeah. yeah, the red arc brake. And um, basically I didn't press that in. I actually just used the foot brake because I probably didn't fully understand okay. what he was doing. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to, to, the, to, the, to the crash in a moment. Yep. So, and, then, and then I just towed it through um, okay. this hilly town um, and just very, I was pretty tentative and going pretty slowly with it. I didn't want to even go over 80 k's when we we're on the um, open road. Even though okay. it was a 100 k limit, I didn't even feel comfortable much more than 80. Yeah. Okay. Well, why didn't you feel comfortable going above 80? Because I was, uh, towing was unfamiliar to me and it, it felt if you got a bit faster, you could get a bit of a, you could feel a bit of a sway happening. So my husband had had that when we first picked it up and um, I just was not comfortable to go too okay. fast. When you say you could feel a bit, bit of a sway, how did that manifest itself? What did it feel like? Um, well, if when you're driving, if it just, yeah, if you just hit a bit of a, uh, uh, it felt a bit wobbly. Yes, wobbly is the term. Wobbly. <laughs> Car yeah. feels okay. wobbly. Okay. All right. So you're doing, uh, going along this road then, and uh, we've got it up on, um, bring it up on, on Google's uh, Street View. You're doing about 80, 90 Ks and it's a uh, no, normal it, road. It 80, I was really careful not to go over that, but yeah. um, I did. Um, my husband said, look, you can put it on cruise control so it doesn't go over 80. Yeah. So um, I said, are you sure? I'd sort of prefer to feel what's going on. He said, no, if you put it on 80, it'll keep it there um, so it won't be, um, won't go over. So um, so I did put the cruise control on for 80 to try and control that as well. Okay, that's interesting to know. All right. Yeah, um, yeah I thought you'd need to know that. Yep. Yeah, that, that's an important point. Okay, so we're driving all day, then you go up a hill and then you go down a hill. And is that when the problem started to come? Well, it didn't go up a hill. It started to, we were sort of fairly flat, but we yeah. started to descend um, a, a hill and right. it, it started to build up speed and the wobble really severely happened. My husband had actually had just um, closed, closed his eyes and he woke up and said, slow down, slow down. And in response to that, I put my foot on the brake and because he said, slow down, slow down, I went down and off and down again. And that is when it severely swayed, jackknifed. We flipped it on our side and it yawed the car up and over. Mm -hmm. um, so it flipped onto the left side and yawed the car up and over and slammed down on the driver's side. Okay, so let, let's just go through that again then. So you're doing about 80 k's an hour on cruise control. And yep. you then go down a hill and cruise control is still on at this point? Yes, yes. Okay. But um, it, it picked up and it picked up speed going down yeah, the hill. Well, and that's the thing. Um, some cruise controls actually do regulate your speed going downhill, but not all of them. And I, I'm no. pretty sure that the Pajero of your age doesn't. So no. it would actually accelerate downhill. Well, the yes. gravity would accelerate downhill. So it would, yes. it would have picked up speed. Did, did you yes. know that? Did you know that the cruise control wouldn't retire your speed going downhill? Yes, I, I did feel that, but I, 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 was, I was a bit distracted in that there was a lot of cars lining up behind us because we were doing a slower speed. So I was a bit anxious about yeah. that. I was feeling anxious of the whole situation. Um, couldn't see that we're coming up to a hill. It sort of came down and away from us. Um, this hill is renowned for taking out trailers and trucks yeah. and things 
So I wasn't aware of that. Aware. Um, oh. And so once I realised we were picking up speed, um, it, but it was a bit too late by then. It, the, the wobble was severe. I hit, hit the brakes, but it was too late. Okay. We are out of control. And your instinctive reaction was, of course, with all your years of driving experience, you slow a car down, you press the foot brake. Absolutely, yeah. Right. That's now, what you're feeling the trailers start to wobble more and more. You put mm -hmm. the brakes on. How much time elapsed between when you felt the first wobble and you realising you were going to be crashing? Not very long at all. It was probably... But two seconds. Few seconds, really. Yeah, yeah, two to three seconds since when my wife said to me, "What did you actually say?" I can't remember what you said. I said, "Hang on." <laughs> no, no, no. I know, but you said to me, oh, "There's a wobble or something." I don't know what you said to. Um, I, I, I can't. Recall I can't that. remember. Andrew said something to me. Uh, the car's wobbling, and then I said, "Said just slow Not down," again. and I said, "Slow down again." So whatever that takes. By the time we said that, and then she just said, "Hang on," and I did. I said. To myself i can't believe it's we're crashing <laughs> yeah okay yeah because if you look at all the sway videos on youtube it's probably about four seconds between when the sway develops to when it's out of control it's it's, it's absolutely really i yeah, would attest to that i would say yeah three to four seconds and you, yep. you've got nothing and it's it's a blink well it's not a blink but it's gone it's four seconds and you're just in there for the ride you can't control anything that's happening yeah okay so so that is explained what the lead up to it and what actually um, ha happened there. So what, what's your learnings and takeaways um, f f from this? Um, well, for a start for myself, it's not to have me behind the wheel um, until I um, am trained in um, towing. Um, like the, we in, intend to enrol in the road tech course, which is uh, two and a half hours south of us at another city. Um, and uh, my husband has more experience in the towing, so when we do pick up and take delivery of our new van, it'll be I'll pretty much will be his. He'll be behind it. But um, the other thing we want to look at is um, having it set up before we even leave Brisbane when we could do pick up. So making sure everything's set up with tire pressures and everything like that. Um, there is apparently a professional group that can come to you and actually. Um, way and you'll hot look at your setup and and tell you how yep. best to set up the van so i actually would like to when we take delivery of it book those people as well in brisbane before yep. we even leave to come home because we're five hours north of brisbane so that's my takeout from there we've asked about are there other devices we should put on the van um the, the actual manufacturer of the the distributor feels that's not necessary he feels it's more about your tire pressures and how the thing is set up to prevent wobbles so for us um you know we, we're not looking at extra things like sway bars or any of that kind of stuff sure. but um but we we just want to gather as much information as we can i i it, it has left me very um nervous about driving or towing it ever again i will do the course because i do believe you have to be um, available in case something, if we are out and about and my husband is unwell or, or something happens and I need to be able to be the second driver, I need to be competent to do that. But I still will probably prefer for him to be the tow. Even if I do all the course, I would prefer for him to be towing. Um, so that's my take out from it anyway. So thanks to Andrea and Trevor for sharing what's a very valuable experience for us all and we can all learn a lot from it. So I'm going to get on to a few points that we can take away from their experience in a moment. But before I do, I want to talk about the tow car um, that they have replaced their old versions with. Now obviously in that crash, both the trailer and the tow car were written off. They have replaced the trailer with exactly the same model again, but they have changed the tow car from a 2008 Pajero to a 2017 Prado and that actually has a number of advantages for towing. The first one is the Prado uh, weighs more, it's 2300 kilograms not just over two tons and the heavier the tow car relative to the trailer the better. Now if you want proof of that go see my trailer weights video where I put a model on a rolling road and we put different weights in it and you will see that the heavier the tow car the far better it is able to control trailer sway.
Next point is the Prada has got something called Trailer Stability Control. Now that is a, an electronic program on the tow car which detects the onset of trailer sway and it individually breaks each wheel to cancel it out. So that, that's not a preventative measure, that's a detective and recovery measure. Now I've got a specialist video on that to explain exactly how it works but it is something well worth having and it works automatically, you don't need to switch it on. Now, five star safety, I'm going to talk a bit about five star um, safety again in, in a cu couple of other slides, but for the moment, um, the Prado is a much newer design and it has a five star safety rating, whereas the older Pajero doesn't. So that's important as well. And then finally, both vehicles are all wheel drive, which means they can drive all wheels all the time, even on high traction surfaces like dry bitumen. Now, that's an advantage for towing, um, not just when you're accelerating um, on wet roads, but also when you're slowing down and using the engine brakes, going around a corner. And I find it useful even when you're backing and maneuvering heavy trailers. So, all wheel drive is an advantage there. Now the Pajero um, can often be run in 2H mode, two wheel drive only mode, but uh, there's no reason at all not to run it in 4H mode with the centre diff unlocked. Um, that will just give you all the extra traction for just a tiny, tiny extra uh, amount of fuel use. All right, let's talk about that safety a bit more then. So here's the vehicle which um, w was rolled, the 2008 Pajero, and you can see here just how badly that A-pillar has been crushed in. It's really quite significant there, and it's a good thing um, Andrea isn't six and a half feet um, tall, otherwise, you know, she probably would have been a little bit shorter than that when she came out there. So, yeah, significant amounts of um, crush there as well. And you can see here, that's where she was lying for a few hours whilst um, they're uh, waiting for people to come and cut them out. Now here's a more modern vehicle which has rolled and you can see there that uh, A, B and C pillars um, are not compressed at all. It's actually gone right over onto its roof but um, it has sort of got this crash area around here which hasn't compressed at all and that's the way modern cars are designed. The area where the occupant's in is in is extremely difficult to crush but all of the energy all of the force is absorbed by the bonnet and everything else like that um, and then that should leave the crash protection area um, for the occupants undamaged and you can just see how effective that is also note here are the side airbags which have deployed and again obviously they're going to help in the rollover the older Pajero didn't have them the Prado has so Summary, the Prado is less likely to um, have trailer sway and because it's heavier, it's also able to detect it and if the worst does happen, well, you're better off in the Pajero, per, Pajero, Prado rolling than the Pajero. Now, how did this come about? Well, there's something called the IIHS in America and they have this test. So they take about well, four times the vehicle weight and they press it onto the vehicle using this machine over here and they're looking for a deflection of less than um, five inches or about 130 millimeters and the car's got to be able to pass that and it can only pass that if the A pillars, B pillars etc there are really strong and that's obviously really helpful in the event of a crash. All right so let's get on to the seven things we can take away from this unfortunate incident. Now the first one is if you get any sway at all when you pick up your new van, sort it out immediately. So let's say that you're getting a little bit of sway on at 90 k's an hour and it's a perfectly good day, it, it's not windy, it's dry, it's on the flat. Don't assume that oh, you'll just drive at maybe 80 k's an hour and all will be well because what you'll find is that you might just drive at that 80 k an hour limit or 90 whatever it is but then one day you're going downhill, there's a gust of wind, it's wet, there's a bunch of other things happening there, bit of off camber and all of a sudden sway sets in. So you should be comfortable towing your trailer at the legal speed limit and have absolutely no sway at all. Then you can back off 10 k's an hour or whatever else and you've got a bit of a safety margin. You've also got to know what causes sway as well. So when you go downhill, you are more likely to get sway. I've got a video on 10 things which cause trailer sway. So you know heading downhill, it's a good idea to back off the, um, the power a little bit and you just reduce speed. Um, also, a good tip is that when you're coming downhill, knock the vehicle into a lower gear, even in automatic, yes, you can do that, and just set that trailer brake sensitivity so a small amount of brake pressure on the tow car has a relatively large amount of braking pressure on the trailer, and that will just help you keep any potential sway under control. Now, use the trailer brakes to kill sway. This is really important. So whenever you have trailer sway coming on, the thing to do is not to accelerate, not to brake, um, keep the car 
nice and straight as best as you can and press that electric brake controller to activate the trailer brakes. Now when you do that you have to ensure that it actually will activate the trailer brakes because if the dial is turned all the way to the left in, in some cases it will activate the brakes but such a low sensitivity it won't do anything so you may need to press the button and turn it to the right um, in order to get any effect. Now this is something you can actually practice so you don't need trailer sway to onset for this. Next time you're cruising at um, you know 100 k's an hour something like 90 whatever your cruise speed may be and there's no one else around it not going to slow down rapidly. Just um, try coming, um, keeping the accelerator exactly where it is, press that trailer uh, electric brake controller button and you'll feel the whole uh, rig slow down and it's a good idea to practice that before you get trailer sway. Now then lo locate your electric brake controller in the centre of the vehicle. The reason for that is that the passenger can then reach it as well. Now in this case if the passenger had been able to, Trevor had been able to reach over and get to that brake controller and press it, quite possibly the accident could have been averted. But it's impossible to do that if the um, controller is all the way on the other side of, on the right hand side of the driver, assuming your right hand drive car. Now when you're going downhill cancel cruise control. Most of the time in most vehicles cruise control will let the vehicle pick up speed as it goes downhill and particularly so when you've got a caravan on the back of the um, extra, extra mass. So either cancel it or back it up but just be aware that cruise control won't necessarily keep your retard your speed going downhill. And then share the driving. Very often we see that the bloke does all the driving and a woman um, usually just does hardly any. Well, that's not really going to be an effective uh, safe safety system. You need to share the driving properly so you're both comfortable with it as opposed to one person do all of it and the other one just do it in absolute emergencies. You've got to get comfortable with it. you kind of got to know what right feels like when you're driving anything like this. So the moment it, it, it starts to feel unusual, you know because you've got the experience to think, hang on, something things are wrong here. And finally, know your car. So in the case you could run a Pajero in all-wheel drive, that wouldn't have helped in this situation, I don't think. But every little bit does start to uh, make a small difference. And have a good read of your owner's manual. There might be some hidden gems in there specific to your car about what you can do, what you can't do, etc. Maybe bust a few urban myths. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Um, please like, subscribe, share. Thanks again um, to Amanda and Trevor for sharing their story. And I will be doing a video on all the measures you can take to prevent trailer sway in the first place. Thanks for watching.